Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to the uh, Halftime Talk feature interview series. I'm delighted today to be joined by Tom Smink, EVP for Growth at VTTI. Tom, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Great to have you. Well, there's been quite a bit of news coming out of uh, VTTI uh, from an LNG uh, point of view. Uh, we've seen just, just in the last couple of weeks an announcement uh, that uh, an agreement, at least in Italy, to require a, a stake in Adriatic LNG. We have also the Dragon LNG uh, deal in the UK. And this is quite a new sort of departure for VTTI. What's behind that impetus? Indeed, indeed, uh, definitely, definitely something. Uh, I mean, uh, over the last few, uh, few, uh, few years or few, few months, we have been uh, quite active to, uh, in addition to our traditional activities on the uh, on the oil side, to uh, to further establish a footprint on the LNG side. Uh, LNG, as such, is a key growth area as part of our strategy uh, 2028. Uh, we aim to have 50% of our business to coming from new and traditional energies like LNG. Uh, and we see as ourselves as an independent infrastructure provider that we want to build a portfolio of LNG receiving uh, facilities through acquisitions, and, but also through greenfields with a clear focus on, on the one hand, Europe, and on the other hand, Asia Pacific uh, aligned with the market fundamentals. And obviously, uh, as you pointed out, uh, the two recent uh, acquisitions are uh, two LNG terminals in two critical gas markets across Europe, Italy and, uh, and the UK. And at the same time, we are working on various opportunities, such as in the Netherlands, uh, where we are developing mm -hmm. an energy-based terminal together with Hoek, uh, a leading energy provider. And at the same time, we see very solid growth potential in this area, in the LNG market as, as such, where supply and demand is expected to double in the next few decades to come. And where we see gas as a crucial part of the energy transition, and where in developed countries, uh, like for instance in Europe, it helps to balance out other types of clean uh, energies, uh, which are not always available and, and, and where production is fluctuating over time the sun is not always shining and the wind is not always blowing where gas can play a critical role. And whereby in developing countries, gas actually plays a critical role to replace coal and mm -hmm. to meet the increasing uh, demand needs because of growing population, uh, growing GDP in, uh, in, uh, in, in less developed countries. Yeah. And in addition, and what you have seen very much recently, LNG is essential for delivering security supply to uh, to countries, uh, for instance, what you have seen across Europe, uh, and at the same time also in markets to replace the domestic gas production. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you said, Europe has been <laughs> a big benefactor of that in the last two, three years with the whole Russia gas situation, taking a lot of LNG from the US. Um, you mentioned, uh, Tom, about the recent acquisitions, but you mentioned Asia as another area uh, of interest. Um, I mean, in, so from a timeline point of view, how quickly do you see that VTTI would be, again, looking to, to do agreements there also on the ground? How developed is the infrastructure uh, in Asia uh, and attractive for, for investment? Yeah, yeah we, we see, I mean, when it comes to the LNG infrastructure developments, and if you compare Europe against Asia, we see for both markets key opportunities for us to establish that footprint and that portfolio of LNG receiving terminals for different reasons. Uh, like I said, in Europe, it is largely driven by security supply. And, and like you mentioned, to replace the Russian gas, uh, but at the same time, as mentioned also, to accommodate the increased flexibility in the market and in, in these deep liquid markets across, uh, across Europe. Whereby in Asia, new markets indeed still needs to be created. And LNG is also there required to replace domestic gas, uh, domestic gas that is typically depleting mm. in a few of uh, few of uh, Asian uh, countries uh, where there are already existing gas markets, uh, for instance, in South Asia with Pakistan, Bangladesh, but also in Southeast Asia, for instance, in Philippines, 
where domestic gas is depleting and where LNG can fulfill that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that growing need to replace domestic gas, but at the same time also to, uh, to steer economic growth in, uh, in, uh, in, in these, uh, these type of countries. What you see very often in these type of markets, in the new markets, in the new LNG markets, is that often LNG infrastructure is development, developed for single demand pockets or for single customers. Mm -hmm. and where in Europe, due to the liberalization and due to all the interconnectivities between the ver various jurisdictions across Europe, and we see a more liquid market where LNG terminals are servicing multiple customers through more an open access model where services over time have been added and customers has been added over time. And the good thing is for VTTI as an independent service provider and infrastructure provider, we can blow, we can play both very, very nicely in markets where there is an open access model and at the same time in markets across Asia Pacific where there is still a strong need to develop new infrastructure and mm -hmm. where we can be an infrastructure provider and partner to develop dedicated facilities for key customers in growing markets. I mean, do you see other players uh, like yourselves who have not traditionally been in that LNG infrastructure uh, market getting involved? I mean, is that something that you see taking off uh, more, uh, you know, with sort of new new people with experience that such as yourselves in the conventional energy storage getting into that market? Yeah, so so typically what you see in the LNG space uh, is is that typically uh, LNG terminals were developed either by the suppliers or by the importers. Uh, and in light of liberalization and bundling in the European market, they saw a role for more independent players. So the, typically the TSOs like Gazoon in the Netherlands, like SNAM, which uh, hope to be our partner in, in Italy for our acquisition as the uh, as the local uh, local TSO in these type of jurisdictions. We don't see uh, many global players that are uh, acting at a global scale. There are a few uh, peers and, and, and that are also offering uh, global type of solutions, but uh, typically that is very much restricted to uh, to specific regions or players, like I said, uh, that are uh, that are in the business of supplying the molecules or of taking the molecules. Tom, you mentioned that you see this this part, this new sort of, uh, I suppose, a part of the strategy for 2028 VTTI, uh, that's going to be 50 percent of your business in the future. Where does that leave? your conventional sort of fuels, energy storage business? I mean, is that the other 50% or do you see actually uh, you know, that also beginning to, to change from a focus point of view for the company? And again, geographically, where is there opportunity, new opportunity for that area? Yeah, get, going forward, what we see and what we have set ourselves or in, in the strategy indeed, 50% where we see still a crucial role to provide security supply uh, in, in key markets in a traditional space where we see still very much and we are very much aware that fossil fuels will be still needed for the next uh, for the next few uh, few decades that might be dependent on various jurisdictions in developed countries and underdeveloped countries uh, but we see definitely still a very healthy demand for storage in a conventional space in the uh, in the oil side. Uh, and that, that that will be continued to be needed, where we see growth still growth rate at annual growth rate of around four uh, percent for the next uh, for the for the next few uh, few decades to come, where slowly the transition uh, in in some of the markets that will be probably going to be at, at at a high speed these type of transitions, where slowly VTTI will try to position ourselves to uh, to transfer the existing, uh, uh, existing terminals uh, to accommodate first in the existing tankage, uh, new type of uh, services in relation to biofuels, in relation mm -hmm. to, uh, to SAF, in relation to green methanol, where we can repurpose existing tankage, but at the same time also slowly transition because we have key locations available in critical port locations where we also see the future flows 
going into uh, into the markets, like for instance, ammonia, blue and green uh, ammonia, and ultimately cracked ammonia into the hydrogen mm. space. Yeah. Uh, and where we see the existing footprint of location to slowly transfer into uh, into into more newer and traditional type of uh, of infrastructure. But at the same time, for the next foreseeable future, we see a healthy balance. On the one hand, still playing a crucial role in the uh, on the fossil fuel market to provide security supply for key markets and key customers and and governments, and at the same time contribute to the uh, to the energy transition. By on the one hand, traditional fuels in LNG, and at the same time, play a front runner role in in a new energy space in hydrogen and circular economy type of for value propositions in biogas and waste to value. Yeah, and I mean, in those sort of future greener fuels, if you like, I mean, VTTI operates in 15 countries, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, so you know, you span a very large geography. Do you see? Uh, a distinction amongst regions on how quickly that part of the equation will take off the green ammonia uh, hydrogen uh, biofuels etc or or do you see that sort of i suppose balancing balancing out quite neatly yeah the, uh, good question i mean uh, looking at the different product categories where we are active in the conventional space we definitely see still a lot of growth opportunities particularly in more underdeveloped countries whether that is in, in Asia Pacific or whether it is in Latin America, where we are pursuing a few acquisition opportunities to further grow and expand the, uh, the footprint that we are having. Well, at the same time, for instance, LNG, we see a very balanced uh, market where we see both opportunities for growth in the European market as well as in Asia Pacific and selectively in other continents like in Africa and Latin America. Uh, for hydrogen uh, and, and CO2, our key focus for now, it's largely in developed countries across Europe. Uh, but at the same time, over time, we will definitely also see other opportunities arising in, uh, in, in less developed countries. Okay, and Tom, let me ask you a bit about what, what's, the, what's the atmosphere at the moment and sentiment for you know, financing these kind of acquisitions and partnerships. I mean, in the context of, uh, you know, higher interest rates, in the context of the fi the banking sector becoming more uh, stringent on ECG, ES ESG, uh, et cetera, um, do you see that the financial sector is attracted to to fund such acquisitions? Is it, uh, is it competitive? Where, where is it at the moment on that front? Yeah, for, for instance, if you take the example of the two recent acquisitions uh, that we are working on towards uh, towards closing during the course of this year, uh, these two projects are being funded uh, at a project level uh, with healthy healthy project financing in place uh, for both the opportunity in the UK as well as the opportunity in uh, in Italy, and at the same time also uh, from an, from a portfolio perspective. Uh, we are uh, we are still see uh, extremely attractive uh, attractive uh, uh, opportunities to uh, to have a, a fair balance between on the one hand uh, the existing shareholders uh, uh, Vito, IFM and Adnoc uh, playing a crucial role in funding the growth strategy and at the same time also from a depth point of view uh, where we are working with a, a combination of, uh, of of solutions. Uh, to uh, to attract depth in the, in the market, obviously yeah. we see uh, a bit more pressure from from also the bank uh, bank sector point of view on the conventional space, but also there uh, there might be different ways to uh, to further uh, diversify uh, the portfolio of uh, of banks and debt financing uh, that is uh, that is available to fund uh, both the traditional space as well as the new energy space. Okay, great. Uh, I mean, you mentioned Adnoc there, of course, one of the shareholders of VTTI, but we've had a couple of headlines, interestingly, on Adnoc in the last week or so about it. It is also, you know, making investments in LNG elsewhere, uh, the US, Mozambique, um, uh, etc. I mean, just, just, I'm not asking you to talk on Adnoc's behalf, but in, in general, would you say that that is a, uh, you know, a reflection uh, of, of, of the demand out there for LNG, uh, our, our NOC players such as Adnoc, do you see that becoming a bigger market for them? 
Yeah, def definitely. That is something, obviously, like you said, and we, we I mean, I can't sp speak on behalf of Ednark or on behalf of other exporters, but definitely what we see is the strong uh, confidence of, of these players, but also in general, not only the national companies from, from the Middle East, but also uh, also the, uh, the traditional majors, as well as uh, uh, the trading houses, including, uh, mm -hmm. including the other shareholder, Vitol, that is uh, uh, getting uh, increasingly active in the LNG market, uh, that is underpinning uh, the, the strong confidence of the market that the LNG market will, uh, will grow significantly in the next decades to come. At the same time, uh, we certainly see also the increase of overall LNG players in the market. And where with more players entering the LNG market, the LNG market in itself will also move and change over time. Uh, where traditionally, as mentioned earlier, the LNG market has been established by traditional point-to-point -point deliveries. And where with the entrance of liberalization in Europe and, 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 and the United States, but also slowly across the Asia Pacific. And at the same time, uh, the entrance of, uh, of multiple players, both on the supplier side, but also very importantly on the demand side in light of liberalization, uh, that you see more players becoming active and where there is a, a growing liquid market to arise where there is more segregation in the value chain. And that actually offers the opportunity for infrastructure players like ourselves to play a critical role in the midstream side to offer independent uh, infrastructure solutions, either through acquisitions and to make these, uh, these LNG terminal more uh, bespoke and, and add additional services and add additional customers or uh, play a critical role to develop new infrastructure for, uh, for, for new players that do not have the credentials uh, and do not have the capabilities to develop new infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a growing demand for gas in general. And of course, when you, the power, the whole power market is, is going to be uh, sort of obviously demanding that in terms of as an off taker. Um, VTTI also recently acquired a 50% interest in chemical storage terminal in, in China. Uh, is that a, a market that you, I mean, you've talked about developing markets, emerging markets, but from a chemicals, you know, we see how obviously China's investment in refining is, is, is going to become much more focused on, to the pet chem side. Uh, the future of refining, one could argue, is going to be all pet chems. Um, would you would you see more opportunity there uh, and growth? Definitely, definitely. I mean, indeed, uh, already a few years ago, we we made our first step into China uh, by investing or acquiring a an existing uh, chemical uh, terminal in Dalian in another part of the country, and indeed, we are assessing further growth opportunities across China. The reason why, obviously, you can't uh, you can't ignore China for the right reasons because China is one of the largest energy and chemical customers where, as you mentioned, they are building more and more their own refineries and their own petrochemical complexes across, uh, across China. And they're building their own capabilities to be less dependent on imports and where you definitely see China to develop these opportunities at a very large scale around major petrochemical hubs alongside the coastal area. And where at the same time, China, is, is accelerating its position as being a world leader in the, uh, in the, new, in, in the new energy market uh, and to be a green energy leader and to build even capabilities to export their capabilities in, uh, in, in the new energy space. And for us, being a terminal operator like VTTI, this clearly offers an opportunity to play a role, to provide uh, oil and chemical storage opportunities around these large clusters, integrated fully with petrochemical complexes and refineries, while at the same time slowly to become an infrastructure partner into the transitional and a new energy space where there are clearly opportunities being defined on the LNG side, but also in a later stage on the hydrogen side. So definitely China is, is a market where we are looking for, uh, for further growth opportunities. 
Great, Tom. Well, just one more question for you before we wrap up. I mean, the LNG market has had, you know, quite a lot of volatility in terms of the price, you know, demand supply over the last few years. Maybe now its trajectory looks more uh, consistent, uh, but it has had, you know, a lot of a lot of ups and downs, hasn't it, since COVID, even before that. Um, so does that, that's, you know, and, and putting that in the context of, of the energy markets in general today with all these different factors influencing geopolitics, uh, et cetera, is there, is, does that in any way deter investors such as VTTI? Does it give any nervousness to, to those looking to, to sort of enter this, you know, quite volatile market at the end of the day? Yeah, as, as VTTI, we are solely focusing on on the infra side of uh, of of the LNG market, so we are not exposed to uh, to the trading side. Obviously, the volatility what we uh, what we have seen over the last uh, last years in in more liquid markets that is actually uh, accelerating the demand for uh, for regasification uh, because you need to create the optionality to uh, to place cargoes in certain markets. So the demand for regasification, particularly in more liquid markets across Asia, across Europe, is is increasing because of the volatility in the market. Where definitely over time, but that can be mitigated by long term contracts, uh, by different other instruments, is 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 is, is extremely crucial to have more stability in uh, in the value chain to develop new infrastructure, uh, and it is obviously. That, uh, that is something uh, for uh, for our customers and our partners to find the right uh, right commercial structure to develop new uh, value chains and to create new markets in uh, in uh, in for instance uh, underdeveloped markets across Asia Pacific and that it definitely has slowed down a little bit the developments over the last few years but our expectation uh, given the fact that a lot of new supply is coming to the market, uh, with new players from the US, uh, from the Middle East, as mentioned, uh, that will uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, further uh, stabilize the uh, the LNG market uh, and, and to also make LNG more competitive. Uh, and as a result, new markets will be created over time and hence new infrastructure needs to be developed. And I mean, just Tom, just to touch on Fujera, because that's one of the... Um... Uh, terminals, uh, obviously, where where VTTI uh, is present, uh, and it's it's a major bunkering hub, obviously, here uh, in 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 the UAE and for the region. Uh, and clearly, there is a future for it in terms of biofuels, etc., as well. But from a, just a conventional uh, energy product storage um, location, I mean, what would you say would be the the next obvious steps for it in terms of its expansion, whether it's through uh, product choice? Or, or even, you know, is there space for newcomers to come in uh, to the tank farm market, if you like? Yeah, for Fujera is one of these markets and, and one of these uh, terminals within our portfolio where the key focus is really on the conventional side, uh, being on the bunker side, like you mentioned, but also on a few other oil products uh, where we see a strong, strong demand and healthy demand. Uh, for, uh, for 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 bunkering and other type of oil products uh, in the next uh, next few decades to come, and where we would like to play a crucial role to provide services to our key customers in uh, in Infojera, particular focusing on the conventional space, and where in other markets we see uh, a, a quicker a transition towards more mm-hmm. cleaner fuels, uh, for instance uh, in in Rotterdam. Antwerp and, and Amsterdam, uh, definitely we see an accelerated journey towards uh, cleaner, uh, cleaner, uh, cleaner fuels, and where we are making that uh, that step to convert existing uh, existing tankage towards uh, greener solutions. Where Fujara, we strongly believe to play the crucial role on the uh, on the bunkering, the conventional bunker market, and 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 the oil market. Tom Smink, EVP of Growth at VTTI. It's been great to have you on Halftime Talk. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. And, and looking forward to the uh, few other new, uh, new acquisition opportunities and, uh, and Greenfield opportunities to announce soon.